Whether you're using Canon, Nikon, or Sony, the menu systems on modern cameras are pretty robust. It's easy to get lost in the menus trying to customize various settings to your taste and shooting style. There is a feature within these cameras, though, that enables you to be a little more efficient and change your most used settings more frequently when you need to adjust them on the fly. Let's talk about it. For some things, I'm a set it and forget it kind of guy. There are settings within my camera that I change or need access to regularly, depending on environmental conditions or the subject I'm photographing. So set it and forget it isn't going to work there. Sure, you can navigate within the menus to get to any setting, but you have to remember where they are, and when you're photographing someone or something and conditions change, you want access to these features as quickly as you can so you can get back to work. For most things like customizing the various buttons or setting the camera's name or your copyright information, those are things I put in once and don't need to access regularly. But there are a number of items I do want to access quickly. I'm using a Canon R5, and I'm really only familiar with this system. I'm working on the assumption that both Nikon and Sony have something similar, so while I'm going to discuss the physical buttons and menu items specific to my camera, I'm confident there are analogous buttons and menu items on other camera brands. Let's get into it. Here is the back of my camera. This is the menu system I see when I'm typically shooting. It has my exposure information, ISO, um, that I'm in manual mode, all that fun stuff. It's a little dark right here so you can see the screen, but the set button right here is where we're going to be going right here. So I've programmed this button right in the middle of the, the dial. When I press that, it goes into my favorites menu. So these are the things I have set up as my favorites. These are the, the things that I use most frequently and change most frequently. So I want to start with date and time. You know, before every wedding or every event, I, I have two cameras, so I will sync the cameras to, oh look, it was 16, 16, 16. That was pretty cool. Uh, to, I was sent this to a, um, there's a website that I use to to have the, the, the local time and I'll set everything to that. So um, I will also send any second shooters a link to that site as well so that they can sync their cameras before we start because there are a few things that are uh, more frustrating than getting uh, your second shooters work back and their camera is not synced to yours. So if you're trying to put everything together from a ceremony, for example, it's gonna be a little hard to uh, bring everything into alignment. Next, I have battery information here. So I check my battery life uh, pretty frequently toward the end of the night. Sometimes if I'm shooting a lot, if it's a longer day, these will drain down and I do keep a whole other set of batteries. Uh, standing by just in case that happens. So sometimes maybe the last hour or two, I will have to swap out my batteries. These these cameras are pretty uh, power hungry between the, the EVF and autofocusing and all the, the, the modern features that are in here. Next, I have the servo autofocus, not servo as something else. So servo autofocus, I usually use case two. Again, this is a Canon R5. Your Nikon or Sony might have something different. So these are different ways, different presets, uh, if you will, that the camera can use when you're photographing different subjects. Number two seems to work pretty well uh, until we start getting into things like dancing, in which case I will go over to number four. So if people are dancing a lot, I'll use this one right here. So it, uh, the camera's tracking system will follow the, the subject that set to be the thing that is in focus. Next is shutter mode. I use electronic first curtain most of the time. It's not completely silent. Electronic would be completely silent. I'll use electronic shutter during a ceremony, for example, so I'm not interrupting anything that's going on. If I'm doing a commercial job where people are talking, if there is a it's a, a small room and it's otherwise quiet and people are talking, I don't want to interrupt that with the sound of the camera, so I will switch over to electronic. But for the most part, I use electronic first curtain shutter. There are some caveats to using each one, whether it's setting the you know, anti-flicker setting or, you know, for example, with electronic, you can't use the, uh, the, the hot shoe, the flash systems won't work. So you have to either go to electronic or mechanical. I'll use mechanical if I'm in an environment where there are flickering LED lights and maybe I don't want to use the anti-flicker setting for whatever reason. But for the most part, electronic first curtain shutter is what I use. 
Next up is screen brightness. I will change this, uh, and I will make this brighter, for example, if I'm outside and the sun is really bright and I need to see the viewfinder more uh, than, than it could ordinarily. Sometimes I'll bring it down, eh, maybe not that low, but if I'm in a dark environment and I don't want people to be distracted by the glare of my screen, I'll bring it down a little bit. But for me, that's usually a pretty good setting to have things on. And the same thing for a viewfinder brightness. You can change the brightness within the EVF here. I set it to manual. I don't want it to start changing automatically on me. I keep it pretty bright so I can see what's in there. If it's a very bright environment, I might bring it down a little bit, but I tend to keep it right there. Configure is an option that's available on every screen. So right, one, two, three, four. And configure, if you select that, that allows you to customize the screen with all the different items. So select items to register, for example. This will go through the entire menu that's within this camera. Everything that's in there. And it's just it's just one long list. So if you want to find something to, to put in there, you know, the things that I've already shown, for example, you would select it here. I'm not going to do that. So you can sort the items. So you can change the order in which they appear, top to bottom, and delete these things. You can delete everything on the tab. You can delete the tab itself or rename the tab. Eh, I don't really rename the tabs. One, two, three, four is good enough for me. Okay, now screen two, tab two, subject to detect. I have this set to people. Uh, you can change it to these other things right here. I put this in here thinking I would change this depending on what I'm photographing, but I never change that. So it just stays on people. So I really could remove that if I wanted to, but the day may come when I think to myself, aha, I need to select animals for or vehicles, for example, and it will be there. So I just leave it there. Airplane mode on, I leave on all the time because again, these cameras are pretty power hungry. And if you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on, it will drain the batteries more readily than if not. I don't really need this to talk to the outside world for the most part. If I'm gonna send an image from the camera to my phone, for example, I'll have to have that on. You have a system where you're sending images to, I don't know, the cloud or phone regularly or a backup system that you have on site, you'll want to have this, uh, you'll want to have airplane mode off, but I leave it on because I just, it's just not something I need. Next is save load cam settings on card. This is a really useful option to have. Again, I have two cameras. If I send one camera in to Canon Professional Services, for example, if I need any service done, chances are the, the menu system or all my settings are going to be wiped out. Maybe they've done a firmware update. They do that by default. It's a pain to have to recreate everything from scratch. You just have to remember, unless you have something like this. So what I can do is when this camera comes back on the other camera, I can hit save to card and save camera settings, ta-da! And you can save that on a memory card and bring that card, put it into here and then load from card. And there's nothing on there because I haven't done that. And that is a really useful way to continue uh, maintaining your settings between cameras and have everything be identical. Then we have format card. I use this before every event. Before every event, I format my cards. I don't know what was on the old card. If I'm second shooting for somebody and they've given me cards, the first thing I do is format their card because if you're, whatever is going on with their camera, especially if it's a different camera system, you know, I'm using Canon. If someone gives me a card that they've used in their Nikon, for example, I'll put it in my camera and I'll want to format that card. So that card's going to work with my camera no matter what. So format card. You would select what's in camera slot one. I'm not going to do that because I just want to keep the, the images that are on this card right here, but that's how you would do that cancel that. And number two, same thing. You could uh, format the, that card that way. Next, we have tab three, image review. I don't use this very often. I don't remember why I added this to my favorites, but it's here. So review duration. Uh, so when you take a picture, the image will show up on the back of the camera here, and you can change how long the camera, uh, I'm sorry, how long the image will stay on the back of the camera there. I have it set to four seconds. That's enough to you know get a good look at the, at the image, see if it's overexposed or underexposed. I can change my flash settings accordingly, but that's right there. A viewfinder review is super useful. This, uh, I have it set to enable. 
that will show the image within the EVF here, within the electronic viewfinder. So instead, or in addition to showing the image on the back of the camera, it will show it in here as well. So you can review the images without having to take your eye away from the viewfinder. So if things are going on, if you're, you're working very quickly, uh, you can very briefly look at the image that you shot, you know, make adjustments to, to on the fly and uh, not have to take the camera away from your face. That's super useful. Next is HDR mode. You can do in-camera high dynamic range images. Um, I have it set to one shot at a time. Sometimes I'll be in a church or maybe um, a really contrasty ceremony outside and I want to see what, what it might look like in HDR. So what it will do is it will take the regular image, it will take uh, an image that's a little overexposed and a little underexposed and combine them so you can have HDR. I don't use the in-camera version that it creates, I bring those three images into Lightroom and have Lightroom do it. I find it to be a little more, have a little less of that HDRE look, which I really don't like. If I'm really going to do HDR stuff, if I'm shooting, you know, a landscape or if I'm shooting uh, a building and I want to, a more dynamic range than the camera has natively, I will just take several images that are uh, at different exposures and combine them within Lightroom. I find that to be a lot better, but this will work in a pinch and it's, uh, it's kind of neat. Finally, over tab four, these are the basic things that Canon puts in here. So if I were to add a tab, I can add a my, my menu tab, add a tab, say okay, and it adds a fifth one. There we go. I don't want that. I'm going to delete that tab, delete this tab, and there you go. So it's just that easy to add more screens here. The more you add, the more complexity you're going to, to have within whatever it is you're doing. It might make things a little less efficient. So I like to keep it here. Um, again, I use HDR mode rarely, so it's on the third screen. Image review I don't really use, but I have plenty of space to add other things should something occur to me. And I'll just go back and review. And, uh, and that is how I set everything up. So there you go. That's how I keep my camera organized. How about you? What menu items do you put in your favorite screen? Are there any settings you'd like to suggest I and other people add to theirs? What helps you stay efficient? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your spending a few minutes with me. If you like this kind of video, please like and subscribe. It really does help with the algorithm. If you'd like to see more videos like this, check out this other one I made for you. This is Ask a Wedding Photographer. I'm Seth Kay, and I'm here to help.